Theropod dinosaurs were the uncontested largest land predators in our planet's long history, with dozens of species reaching the size of modern elephants. The very biggest examples, like the Mega Carcharodontosaur Giganotosaurus, or the Mega Tyrannosaur Tyrannosaurus rex, pushed past 8 to 9 metric tons as adults. Some exceptional Tyrannosaur specimens may have surpassed the fabled 12 and 13 ton marks, a league above any non dinosaur land predator. But we spend so much time focusing on the giant theropods that ruled the Mesozoic, we often forget how insane other prehistoric land predators were. This video will go on a quest to find the biggest non-dinosaur land predator ever, starting with the familiar and working our way up through various bizarre and terrifying animal groups. Let me know in the comments what your prediction for the winner will be. For reference, let's take a quick look at the biggest land predators we still have walking around. The biggest modern cats, to start off, are the Siberian tigers. Males are much larger than females, at up to 300 kilograms compared to up to 160 kilos. That means a big male Siberian tiger will weigh as much as 2.54 Dwayne Johnsons, a standard American unit of measurement. We'll be using that a lot in this video, so get used to it. Wolves, the largest living canids, have exceptional record-sized individuals from Russia that weigh as much as 79 kilograms, or 0.66 Dwayne Johnsons. The biggest wild Komodo dragons weigh in at about 81 kilos, barely larger than record-sized wolves at 0.68 Dwayne Johnsons. But none of those animals even come close to polar bears. Males range from 300 to 800 kilograms, depending on the subpopulation, and the world record largest was shot in 1960. It weighed a hair over a thousand kilos for a Dwayne Johnson score of 8.49. Any one of these extant animals are capable of shredding a healthy adult human to bits in close quarters combat, but they pale in comparison to their prehistoric counterparts. Let's start off with felids. There are multiple contenders for the biggest prehistoric cat of all time within the same broad mass range. The Gongdong tiger is one many have heard of, with the scientific name Panthera tigris soloensis. It terrorized Pleistocene Indonesia and was previously estimated to weigh up to 400 kilograms. However, a 2016 study that included new body mass regressions from mammalian carnivores found it to be comparable to Siberian tigers at around 300 kilograms. That's still enormous, with the Dwayne Johnson score of 2.5, but isn't the biggest fossil felid by any stretch. Still, tigers are one of my favorite modern animals, so knowing that they were still bulky and beautiful in the Pleistocene pleases me greatly. Panthera spilea, the Eurasian cave lion, was a huge cat that shrank throughout the course of the Pleistocene. A 2024 study found that the most recent examples of the species, Panthera spilea spilea, were about modern lion-sized. The earliest, Panthera spilea fossilis, was absurdly larger. The biggest individuals had a shoulder height of 1.5 meters, nearly 5 feet were almost 3 meters long, and weighed 400 to 500 kilograms, or 3.38 to 4.23 Dwayne Johnsons. Their appearance in Eurasia was so impactful that they drove the previously dominant Homotherium and native jaguars into mesopredator roles, while the cave lions took over the apex niche. Injuries on cave bear bones may imply attacks by Panthera spilea fossilis, focusing on young individuals. The lion's exceptionally powerful forelimbs are thought to have been useful weapons when battling bears in confined areas, somewhat countering the size difference. Panthera atrox, the American lion, is another giant felid. This heavily built cat lived everywhere between Canada and Mexico during the Pleistocene, only going extinct as recently as 12,800 years ago. Their diets varied according to geography, with the northern populations preferring high concentrations of pronghorn and sheep, while southern cats added horses, bison, and even mammoths. Estimates from the early 90s put the biggest specimens at around 523 kilograms, but more recent studies bring that down to a more modest 420 kilograms. That's still absolutely enormous, at four times the mass of a typical adult lion today, and equivalent to 3.55 Dwayne Johnson's. On to canids. Everyone loves wolves. Their gregariousness, intelligence, and beauty make them important figures in human cultures worldwide, but they are far from the biggest members of their clade when you account for prehistoric equivalents. Episcion Haydeni takes that title handily. It's part of the Boraphagine, a group within Candidae known for their robust, bone-crushing jaws, and in terms of diet may have resembled a huge Duraphagus hyena rather than a modern wolf. Adults of these species were over 100 to 120 kilograms typically, and a 2008 study found the largest specimen to weigh 170 kilograms based on a gigantic humerus. That's around a Dwayne John score of 0.84 to 1 for average adults, and 1.44 for the biggest. Whether or not they lived in packs is unknown, but it's certainly a terrifying thought. Either way, Episci and Haydeni would have made Miocene and Pliocene North America a scary place to live if you were smaller than a rhinoceros. 
For Ursids, our first contender for biggest member is Arctotherium angustinens. While the estimates of a two-ton bear are fanciful, since they're based on a humerus with diameter awkwardly increased by damage and bone regrowth, Arctotherium angustidens was still a massive animal. A 2009 study found a more reasonable range of 412 kilograms for small adults, with 1,200 kilograms as the absolute ceiling for the biggest specimens. Isotopic and morphometric studies show that this giant short-faced bear ate mostly meat, and likely would have both taken down prey and scavenged as needed. Its size would allow it to scare smaller predators off their own kills and take the carcass for itself. Arctodicimus is another absolutely gigantic bear. This North American omnivore would have eaten a large amount of vegetation supplemented by meat, which would come from browsing herbivores like ground sloths. It was a powerfully built animal by any reasonable standard. A 2010 study found that it weighed an average of 625 kilograms, and the biggest specimen was 957 kilograms. Those are Dwayne Johnson's scores of 5.29 and 8.11 respectively. Heck, even the very smallest weighed 317 kilograms, which is still bigger than the largest Siberian tigers. It doesn't quite reach the same heights as Arctotherium angustidens, however, and is well within the body mass range of modern polar and grizzly bears. There is some disputed evidence that Ursus spileus, the cave bear, that fought cave lions, as we discussed earlier, could have weighed as much as a thousand kilos. However, in order to keep the video from dragging on too long, we should consider it an honorable mention and move forward. Hyenodonts were a diverse and successful group of carnivorous placental mammals that survived for most of the Cenozoic, popping up in Europe, Africa, Asia, and North America during the 50 million years of their tenure. The biggest among them was Megastotherium osteothlastes, a Miocene member of the group that reached half a metric ton. Its name translates to Greatest Bone Crusher Beast, and its skull lives up to the hype at over half a meter long. It was one of the biggest apex predators in Miocene Africa, and likely combined active predation with opportunistic scavenging. A hyena look-alike with a Dwayne Johnson score of 4.23 is not an animal I'd want to tangle with. Uh, alright, alright, that's too much mammal talk at once. This channel thrives off of reptilian supremacy, so let's start that transition by moving to Gorgonopsians. These saber-toothed Permian demon wolves were my childhood. Walking with monsters is incredible, by the way. Gorgonopsians were part of a group called Therapsids, descendants of Sphenacodonts, that included true mammals, as well as their closest relatives. Archetypal Therapsids, Gorgonopsians had columnar legs, were likely endothermic, and had powerful canine teeth. Innistrancevia latifrons was the biggest of them all, at up to 3.7 meters long and about 350 kilograms, for 2.96 Dwayne Johnsons. Innistrancevia as a genus is known from Russia and Africa, with Innistrancevia latifrons hailing from Russia. A 2020 study concluded that large Gorgonopsians' biting strategy was similar to modern crocodilians, biting down fast and hard to inflict maximum damage. They also had stronger bite forces than similarly sized saber-toothed predators like Smilodon. The Dinocephalians were another group of non-mammalian synapsids, and Antisaurus magnificus was their undisputed ruler. This bear-dragon reptilian super-predator had a skull built like a sledgehammer, with thick bony protuberances all over its head that would have reinforced it during biting, as well as intraspecific headbutting combat. Its jaws would have scooped and torn huge chunks of flesh out of the big pariahsaurs it likely preyed upon. Antiosaurus appears to have been one of the largest land predators of the entire Permian, with the smaller, more complete adult specimens estimated at around 600 kilograms, and the bigger, fragmentary individuals scaling to nearly 1,500 kilograms, making it the biggest predator discussed so far on this list. Comparing it to polar bears feels right somehow. What about Sphenacodontids? This was a proposed sister group to Therapsidae, and included famous taxa like Dimetrodon, which, again, is not a dinosaur, I'm sure most of you watching this video knew that, but I have to reiterate every now and again. These animals were synapsids with deep-rooted maxillary teeth, and many had tall neural spines resulting in the classic sail-backed look. The biggest of this paraphyletic group may have been the hulking Tepenosaurus, a 5.5 meter predator that could have weighed as much as a metric ton. It's essentially a giant sailless dimetrodon. That size estimate is from 1955, unfortunately, and I don't believe the material has been thoroughly redescribed since then. If anyone has access to the material, send me an email and we'll talk. That's 8.47 Dwayne Johnsons we're talking about after all, which is a number I'd prefer to verify. Our next group is whatever the heck Smock Walweski is because nobody really knows. There's a reason that its description paper just called it a large predatory archosaur, and in terms of distinguishing characteristics, has characters seen both in early theropods and in Rysukians. Without molecular evidence to figure out its exact evolutionary relationships, we're left wondering if it's more closely related to dinosaurs or crocodiles, with the possibility of convergence explaining the characters that match one group or the other. Whatever it was, it was a big carnivore at 5 to 6 meters long. 
I haven't found any mass estimates for the animal, but non-peer-reviewed gut instinct tells me it's in the 400 to 600 kilogram range. Oh, and its genus name means dragon in Polish, as if you needed another reason to think it was cool. Lizards have had a huge range of size ranges and ecological niches over the long ages of the world. While the biggest lizards were the fully aquatic mosasaurs, some of which passed 13 meters and 10 tons, the biggest terrestrial lizard that we know of was Varanus priscus, informally referred to as Megalania. This enormous Australian monitor lizard went extinct as recently as 50,000 years ago. Call me crazy, but my personal headcanon that I like pretending to believe is that Varanus priscus is still alive in the outback somewhere. I, I don't believe in Bigfoot, I don't believe in Mothman, although I'm sure he believes in me, but you could potentially convince me that the Australian bush is still home to unreasonably large varanids. And unreasonably large Megalania was. Estimates for various specimens provide a range of 2.2 to 3.8 meters long, not including the tail, with corresponding masses of 320 to 1940 kilograms. That may seem like an absurd disparity, but studies on modern Komodo dragon growth plasticity indicate that such variance isn't out of the question. It's actually quite likely. Varanus priscus coexisted with other strange predators from down under, including the marsupial Thylacoleo and the terrestrial crocodile Quincana, but dwarfed both of them. Oh, and it might have been venomous. Cheers. Erythrosuchians weren't lizards, but boy howdy were they awesome. These quadrupedal archosaurs were bobble-headed murder freaks with jaws capable of taking off a human's arm. They were apex predators in the Triassic, and Erythrosuchus, the largest of the group, was from South Africa. At up to 5 meters long and weighing hundreds of kilograms, it was the first apex predator Pez to ever evolve, and was one of the biggest land carnivores of the Triassic. Although life on our planet didn't quite match the quality of prehistoric planet, the scene with the stalking Erythrosuchus was pretty dang satisfying. These bizarre archosaur forms needed more attention, and Morgan Freeman delivered. Notosuchians continue the trend of gigantic land-hunting crocodile relatives in the form of, hold on, Razanendrongobi sakalave. At 7 meters long and 800 to 1,000 kilos, Razanendrongobi was one of the biggest predators of Jurassic Madagascar, and of Madagascar in general. It's unfortunately quite fragmentary, known from pieces of the skull including jaw fragments, but fortunately more complete relatives give us a decent enough picture of its body plan. Take a saltwater crocodile, make its teeth broader, and have it hunt whatever it wants on land. Then you'll start to understand how scary Mesozoic Madagascar was. You all knew that Sebekids would be in this video. The family Sebekidae began in the Cretaceous, under the dominance of the non-avian dinosaurs, with the humble South American Ogre Sucus. When the KPG asteroid hit and wiped out the competition, Sebekids kept trucking along and remained the top predators on the continent for the next 60 million years. This particular group of terrestrial crocodilomorphs reached their zenith in Burina Sucus, a giant from Peru and Argentina. It's another fragmentary croc, but huge regardless. Even the lower bound estimates put it at 1610 kilograms, and 3D modeling with more liberal musculature and soft tissue yields over 2300 kilograms. That's, uh, scary. Barinosuchus ruled over a period of 30 million years from the Eocene to Miocene, and we're still not sure why it went extinct. Think about this for a moment. As recently as 12 million years ago, we had carnivorous reptiles the size of Allosaurus running around in South America. We were born in the wrong time period, folks. Hit rewind. Rysukians are the last group we'll cover in this video. The group is paraphyletic, meaning that it's an artificially created group that includes members of multiple different clades that look similar enough for humans to get confused, but we'll roll with it for the purposes of this video. Postosuchus is the most famous. A North American Pseudosuchian, Postosuchus lived in the late Triassic and represents what happens when crocodiles try to become theropods. Its long legs, short forearms, and powerful skull strongly resemble the carnivorous dinosaurs it lived alongside. It could have moved between a bipedal and quadrupedal pose, allowing it flexibility in adapting to surrounding terrain. The holotype of Postosuchus Kirkpatrickai was about 4 meters long and 300 kilograms, which would scale the larger 7 meter specimen to about 1600 kilograms, or 13.62 Dwayne Johnson's. You know, the more I learn about the Triassic period, the more I love it. Crocodile World must have been an amazing place. Sarasuchus was another proud citizen of Crocodile World, hailing from the Ishigualasto formation of Triassic Argentina. This one was more quadrupedal and was bigger on average than Postosuchus. A 2009 paper used skull measurements to calculate a total length of 4.07 meters and mass of 385 kilograms for two subadults, which we can use to scale the big 6.4 meter specimen to 1496 kilograms. That's 12.68 Dwayne Johnson's. Despite its skull superficially resembling the bone-crushing Tyrannosaurus, Sorosuchus actually had a fairly weak bite force of just over a thousand newtons, and likely would have focused on consuming soft tissue. Adding bones into its diet for mineral supplements would have been out of the question. Fasolosuchus tenax is regarded by many to be the largest Rysukian, and was the inspiration for the quadrupedal abomination featured in Star Wars Episode 65 where Kylo Ren loses the Force and has to shoot things. 
Whether or not Fasolisuchus actually reaches the 8 to 10 meters it's commonly cited is up for debate, with most independent skeletal artists arriving at smaller figures in the 6 to 7 meter range. Somewhere in the realm of 1,000 to 1,600 kilograms seems appropriate, but I'm not aware of any specific mass estimates for it. If you do, let me know in the comments. On to Prestisuchus, a Brazilian Raisuchian discovered nearly a century ago. It grew slowly and had muscle structure that indicated it was fairly primitive in terms of archosaurs, rather than being closely related to either the crocodile line or dinosaur line. It was another quadrupedal hunter, and based on the largest confidently referred specimen would have been 6.7 meters long and weighed 1450 kilograms, for a Dwayne Johnson score of 12.28. Based on that information alone, it actually seems like Postasuchus might be the dark horse winner out of the Rysukians, with Barinasuchus or Megalania taking the overall crown. However, there is an isolated Rysukian dorsal vertebra found with Prestasuchus that may or may not belong to the genus. If it does, it would scale to an animal between 8.2 and 8.7 meters long with a mass of 2,700 to 3,200 kilos, making it far and away the biggest non-dinosaur land predator we've ever discovered. Whether it belonged to Prestisuchus or a relative, it was certainly a gigantic animal, and comparable to many large theropods from later in the Mesozoic. I've also heard rumors about a gigantic Rysukian uncovered in Sweden, but haven't found any sources supporting those rumors. If you're watching this and have more info, please let me know. I'm all for big land crocs and would love to see one in the size range of megatheropods, although I'm aware it's currently wishful thinking. Thanks for watching! Don't forget to check out Vivid and Fossil Fits for fun merch. Subscribe for weekly videos like this and consider joining the channel to support my work. You gain loyalty badges and shoutouts at the raptor level, with early access to videos at the megatheropod level. I'm the Vivid and I'll see you next time. Razanendrikabe. Razu. Resonend... Resonendrogobe... Resonendrogobe... Raise... Raisin... Raisin and an orange... Raisin and gobe... Raisin... Raisin and gabe... Sakalabay!